Well, welcome to a new Harry's Farm video. Now, the last one we did, we raced to try and finish the combining, and that was on, I think it was the 12th of August. Today is the 23rd of August, and we've waited 11 days to get the final, it was only about an acre and a bit out there, uh, and it has been chucking it down. All farmers all around the country are just pulling their hair out at the harvest of 2020. Not only is there nothing there, now the weather's turned on us and it's been constant rain, showers, and it's now become a salvage operation rather than a regular harvest. Um, What's happened actually here is the wheat up here we were harvesting is going straight into oilseed rape and oilseed rape wants to go in the ground. It's the first thing you put in the ground and you want to get in as early as you, put, as you can. We don't have this seed dressing now, which I've discussed on these videos before, and as flea beetle comes in and you want to drill it while there's moisture about and that is the positive side of all these showers that any rape you put in the ground just grows away. So I've been really keen to get it in. And on the other channel you might have seen on Harry's Garage, I was down at this Concours event with the Espada. It clashed with the first day when we could actually ray, uh, put the oilseed rape in, drill it as we term it. So John Walker, my uh, local guy, came up. He drilled up right up to where we finished combining. So what we're going to do now, I'm taking the header out for the combine hook it on the combine and we don't care what moisture it is, what happens, that one acre of wheat is coming into the barn so we can get the oil seed rape on. So yeah, let's go out to the field now and join Charlie with the combine. Okay, I think we're off. All right. So here it goes, literally just as we're putting it on then. There was another shower, it just won't give up this weather. Fortunately, it was a proper gale blowing, so the showers sort of blow through. Dear me. It is a five to three. So this is the little bit that we just couldn't get done because of that enormous storm that came, it came in 12 days ago now when we were trying to do, 11 days ago, sorry. So glad to get rid of it. Because the plan is this is actually going into oilseed rape. We might even put it in tonight. You can see a little bit of green over there. That's actually where there was that green crop of uh, mustard. We topped it all, and then I had a bit of regrowth of thistles and things, and thistles, thistles in oilseed rape are bad news. So we used to round up, first thing this morning, about eight o'clock, we were out here spraying, or John Walker was, and that, that is absorbed very quickly, and we'll be able to cultivate it straight away, but the plant has already absorbed that roundup and it will sort of wither away as the, um, it gets going. Right, what I'm going to do now, it almost looks harvest weather, doesn't it, when you look through the camera lens. That, that wheat is going to be quite damp. I'll test it when he's finished. We'll probably have to keep it separately. It's really quite still this morning, but not now. Just so short, but this is the wheat we put in in February. And at one point I thought we weren't going to have any wheat out here, so everything's a bonus from this field. We spent absolutely nothing on it, never had a herbicide on it. Did put some uh, Roundup for harvest though, before I say that, but it was remarkably clean. This is what was happening, you see the here, these have fallen up down in the wind, and what you're actually getting, I didn't actually put it, but the is now starting to grow in the ear, which is just your biggest nightmare as a, as a farmer, wouldn't it? Because I mean, a wheat is a seed and all it wants to do is grow. So if you give it enough moisture, as we've had over the last few days, that's what it does. Oh, it's nice to see the combine polished up again as well at the front, just the wheat going through, just polishing up that auger. Excellent. Right, what we're going to do now is just dive into this field over here. Two little bits Charlie left because they were so green when we were combining them. I was going to cultivate them in, but I thought, you know what, we're coming to combine that, we might as well 
get these as well. So he's going to run over there. I have to say this year is one of those years when it's really paid to have your own combine. If I've been reliant on a contractor with such catchy weather, if you haven't combined before the rain and you're now trying to combine with the weather fork as it is, it turns into a bit of a nightmare because it's catchy, it's like last year. You get the wet grain, you've got the drying costs and you haven't got the quality of wheat and your yield goes down. It just bites you everywhere when you get a wet season. As I said before, combines always appear really noisy because you just run that engine at maximum revs and then you have a um, just an oil hydrostatic gearbox and you just you just don't think about the engine speed it's just running all the time at 2000 oh he's just put it no, he's put it down now just to put it into gear just to give it an easier time as you get all the inner machinery working then back up puts the revs up so out here you can see a line you probably just see it. We've drilled the oilseed rape, is drilled up to this line here. You can see sort of going towards that Bowser tank. You can see where it's drilled and where it's not drilled, just because there's a little bit of wheat left out here. Honestly, it's just it's sort of it's like a 300 doing this is like bringing out a sort of 400 horsepower strimmer just to get rid of it and then you can get another crop in. But when we're actually combining out here, this was the particularly green area of the crop and it was, just wasn't right and that's why it got left. Time now is quarter past three, so we've been going 20 minutes. That's all we needed that day. Well, probably about 25 minutes, because we've got another bit over there. Hey, I don't know if you can see up there, there's John just coming up. So he's going to be doing that fence just coming up the drive now, he's going out there to drill this in oilseed rate. I'm hearing horror reports of some people with up to 75% of their harvest still to cut. But by having your own combine on the farm and being so over combined, it's been a, actually a very easy combine season because we got it 99.9% .9 done before all this rain and what's in the grain store is top quality because it hasn't been rained on. There just isn't enough of it. There it goes. It's the last bit. I might have to... First prosperity, I'm going to have to come do my own photograph. Last bit of combining. It's over. Right. Well, there you go. It's always a bit of a shock. That's the end of using the combine. There's no other use for it until next year. When you stare at this wonderful machine for 11 months of the year. Ah. Oh. It's a great thing though, and it's been brilliant this year. All I've done is that we had a service this year, which I do every other year, and then that one bearing on that first day, and since then, it has not put a foot wrong. There's actually more going in that trailer than I thought there would be, which is nice. Yeah, all right, have a little look up here. There we go, that's how much we've got from our last little bit and I want I just want to do a moisture meter test so I'll put that in there now bear in mind most of what's in the shed has been around the well 13 14 percent mark I would imagine this will be well, anywhere between 18 and 20%, I would say. Now, I can tell already that is, it's, gone, it's like soft. When you, it's not, doesn't sound gritty when you grind it up like that. 18, I'm saying. Oh, there we are. So I've got the answer. 17.2. 17.2, 17 
Could be a lot worse than that. You can't sell it at 17.2%. You want to be below 15%. Um, but 17, I can do a little bit of careful blending and uh, that will be all right. It's when it goes over 20%, it doesn't last very long in the shed without some drying happening. Okay, wheat harvest done. Now, now let's go back to the yard and I'll show you what else we've been doing. Right, here's the seed we're putting in. Now this is oilseed rate. This is a hybrid variety of oilseed rate. And this bag holds, it's got 7.3 kilos in it, 1.5 million seeds. I haven't counted them all, but I have to believe them. And that, you want half a million seeds per hectare. So this bag will do three hectares, seven and a half acres. You have to be pretty accurate because that bag, 230 pounds to use, sir, of seed. So you want to be pretty accurate putting it in. I was going to spin it on, as I mentioned, how I put the mustard in, but I bottled out and John's coming up to drill this because it's just the con everything conditions are perfect everything's right and I don't want to mess it up I want to give this oilseed rate the best chance I want it to go at basically 50 seeds per square meter precisely and to do that you have a rig like that now upgraded the tractor we've got the um, Claydon drill again hybrid drill that can meter it out that accurately that you can put <laughs> is it um, two um, what's that, 7.3, so it's about 2.4 kilos of seed on a hectare, precisely. But you need a chunk of horsepower to pour a six metre drill through. The Fent 936cc there, that tractor, 200,000 pounds, something like that for that. Drill 60, so it's over a quarter of a million pounds in machinery costs sat there. Um, ought to give you a closer look. But once you get up to that sort of money, you need plenty of acres to go at, and that's why I share the machinery with John. I pay him a contract charge to do it, because I just get a really good machine pushing the, um, the rape in the ground. What's really trick about this fence is, one, it can pick up whatever weight you want on the back, because you have a front weight just on the front linkage here. Two and a half thousand kilos on there. So that's a Range Rover sat on that chunk of metal there, just on the front arms, just so it doesn't pick up its back. If you look in here, look at the size of these wishbones, enormous wishbones. Look at the size of that ram on the steering, massive. It must be six inch, I would say, that hydraulic ram there. For that, there's, um, oh, there's all sorts of powers. Um, links here, just like you find on a car, but everything is super sized just because of the weight of the tractor. Then you can just have a look here. We've got this um, Vero grip here. That means that you can vary the pressure in the tyres from the cab. You can go up and down as, at will. It's also there, again, more weight, this is just to get traction. So you bolt on a whole load of cast iron on here. What are these? Um, 600 kilos there, just inside the wheel. Looks like the centre of the wheel is cast as well. Monster amount of weight, massive tyres, taller than I am. Top link is a ram rather than I have a little screw thread thing that's an actual ram it and then you look at the drill this I've explained this one before basically you have a leading tine in the ground there and this behind it is the coulter and the seed comes is blown down these tubes it's split behind the coulter so it comes out in two exits here behind this coulter so that goes deeper than the seed and the seed is then dropped precisely just behind it and then you come at the back, have these sort of levelling balls just knocking the ground, slightly flat, and these harrows here. And that's it. So that's what's going to do the last little bit of oilseed rate. The rest is drilled. If we have a quick look out in the field, and I'll just go and see if I can find some seed and see if it's starting to grow. Well, this is the field we were, John was out drilling on Thursday while I was at that um, Concord event. Um, it is impossible to find rape normally. I'll have a little go, just see if I can find some seeds. Uh, lovely moisture, the plus side of the weather we've had. This is just perfect growing conditions. I'd love to find you a little seed. It's not very deep rape. Come on seed, just one seed, that's all I need. Doesn't really matter. I think if you come back in a week, if I do another video in about a week's time, 23rd of uh, August, this is perfect time to be putting the rape in. And I've never had such a quick turnaround. So there he is, he's just leaving the yard to go and drill that rate. That's quarter to four. 
we finished combining, what was it, about quarter past three, so half an hour after the combine has left the field, it's going straight back into oilseed rape, ready for harvest of 21. So there you go. That's what's going on on Harry's farm. Always is a busy time of year, uh, this time of year, and particularly so when you, when you have a delayed combine and then you want to get the oilseed rape in in a good time. Let's hope we don't have another harvest like 2020. I was reading in Farmers Weekly today that the harvest is the worst, 2020 harvest is the worst for 30 years. Let's look positively. 2021, it's got an ideal start, moisture, perfect time for the oilseed rate to get away, great soil temperature, roll on 2021. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, well keep watching, keep subscribing, more videos coming along very soon.